Before sunshine, of course. Gotta uh, love the drama. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Nature, for having mercy on us here yes. on this Sunday. If it never rains again, I'll be happy. We've had our fill for the spring. We're good. We're good. Here is the Sealy Realty starting lineup for the ULM Warhawks, who enter today's game with a record of 1-13 and 13 on the year, currently on an 11-game losing streak. It has obviously been a rough go of it for the Warhawks here to start off the 2019 campaign. Leading off playing left field is Sydney McKay. Jacqueline Cresta, the second baseman, will bat second. Batting third is the first baseman, Bailey Thibodeau. Batting fourth is shortstop, Jaden Mount. They're going to face in the circle for Alabama, the right-handed senior from Hastings, New Zealand, Courtney Geddens. Geddens has a sign. Here comes the first pitch in the dirt for ball one. Catching and batting fifth is Bree Roble, the designated player. Anna Hogan will bat six. Batting seventh is Megan Shaw, the third baseman. Charlie Names, the right fielder, will bat eighth. And Victoria Peterson, the center fielder, will bat ninth. Here comes the 1-0 from Geddens. Low again, two balls and no strikes. Courtney on the year, a 5.07 ERA, a 1-0 record, making her fourth appearance and third start. She's thrown nine and two-thirds innings, six hits, seven runs, all earned, three walks and 11 strikeouts. Opponents batting 171 against Geddens. And really, she had a rough first game against Murray State and Troy, but since then, she's pitched pretty well. Yeah, she looked really good out in Arizona, had a nice inning of work earlier in this tournament. It's all about controlling her emotions after mistakes. 2-0. Misses outside again. Three balls and no strikes. Starters presented by Sealy Realty with over 9,000 apartments. Sealy Realty has the next home for you. Start your apartment search at SealyRealty.com. Gettins will throw a variety of pitches. She's got pretty much everything, but her changeup when it's on is dynamic. 3-0 right down the middle for a call strike. 3-1 and one now on Sydney McKay. McKay batting 386 on the year. 17 to 44, eight runs scored, three doubles, and seven RBIs. ULM earlier today dropped a 13-1 decision to Minnesota. The 3-1. That one is line, and that's going to fall for a base hit. Just a soft blooper over Claire Jenkins' head and short. And the Warhawks have a runner on here to start the ball game off. Yeah, the other thing on the scouting report for Courtney Getton, struggles in the first inning. Now, we haven't really seen that this year, Tom, but last year really had difficulty starting off, getting her nerves down in this first inning. You know, and we'll see. She's made a mistake here in the first inning, typically one of her rougher innings when she plays. How will she respond? That brings up Jacqueline Cresta, second baseman. Puts a bunt down, but it goes foul. No balls and one strike. Cresta batting 286, 8 of 28, one run scored and one RBI. Looking at the starting lineup for ULM, no one's hit a homer yet. No. 14 games, and this is now the 15th game of the season for former Alabama catcher Molly Fickner. And I will take a guess, Tom, it will not happen today. The wind is very fierce right in our face, moving a little bit to the right. That bunt is down, but it will spin foul. Reagan Dykes touched it foul. Count moves to no balls and two strikes. In the field for Alabama, Schroeder in left, Brown in center, sides at right, Morgan at third, Jenkins at short, Taylor Clark getting the start today at second. Caroline Hardy here on her senior day is the first baseman, and Reagan Dykes behind the plate. We'll be talking about Caroline as the game goes on. It is a very, just an emotional pregame all the way oh, around. Yeah. The 0-2. Drops right in there for a call strike three and press to do it. She will head back. Struck out on three straight pitches. That's a nice job of a bounce back there by Courtney Geddes. Yeah, and the movement on that kind of an off-speed drop curve right there, it was really beautiful. Started high, came down. Excellent pitch from Geddes. That brings up Bailey Thibodeau. Shockingly, the only player in the starting lineup for Louisiana Monroe whose last name ends with an X. <laughs> and oddly enough, not the only Thibodeau on the field no, because yes. the first base umpire is Michael Thibodeau. I'm nice. assuming no relation. I'm going to say no relation. I, would think I, I that don't would think that'd be fair. A conflict of interest. <laughs> yeah. 0 but 1 is the count on Thibodeau. Kind of weird there. Never seen that before. The 0 1. Foul bat. No balls and two strikes. Thibodeau, right handed senior, batting 333, 6 of 18, 1 RBI. And I'll add about the last at bat, Tom. That feels kind of like a waste because you've got Sydney McKay on first. She's got the best stolen base ability. Right. Now, I'm sure Molly Fickner knows all about Reagan Dykes' arm, but I mean, why not Sim McKay give yourself an RBI chance, maybe let Cresta hit away? The 0-2, low and away, one ball and two strikes. Mentioned the umpires, Ted Broyles is behind the plate with Michael Thibodeau at first and Robert Johnson at third. 
It's the all-time meet, the third all-time meeting between Alabama and ULM. Previous two meetings came in 2016 when the Warhawks visited Tuscaloosa for the Crimson Classic. One, two is waved at and missed for strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by Geddens here. There's two away. Just again, beautiful movement. That one more dropped than anything else. Wasn't really even close to the zone, but Thibodeau was fooled. And again, Courtney Geddens, how about this response? Gives up a single and comes right back with two strikeouts. That brings up Jaden Mount. Right-handed hitting shortstop. First pitch, low for ball one. In those two games that Alabama played ULM in 2016, Alabama won both those games via the shutout, 11 to nothing and five to nothing. The 1-0, off speed, and that's a two hopper to short. Chickens has it, makes the throw over in time to get mount, and the side is retired. So for ULM here in the top of the first, no runs on a hit, no errors, and one runner left. We played a half inning, ULM nothing, and Alabama coming to bat here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Head to the bottom of the first inning. No score between Louisiana Monroe and Alabama. The final game of the 2019 Easton Bama Bash. Here is the starting lineup brought to you by Sealy Realty for the sixth ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. Started off the season on a 14 game win streak. Leading off playing center field is Alyssa Bram. KB sides the right fielder will bat second. Bailey Hempfield, the designated player, batting third. Caroline Hardy on her senior day is batting cleanup and playing first. Batting fifth, the left fielder, Mary Schroeder. Catching and batting sixth, Reagan Dykes. Maddie Morgan, the third baseman, will bat seventh. Claire Jenkins, the shortstop, bats eighth. And Taylor Clark, the second baseman, will bat ninth. They'll face in the circle for Louisiana Monroe, the right-handed freshman from Paradise, Louisiana, Carly Taranto. Taranto on the year, a 23-21 ERA. And an 0-1-1 record is her sixth appearance and third start. She's only thrown six in the third innings, but she's given up 20 hits, 22 runs, 21 of those earned. Walked eight, struck out five. Opponents hitting a very robust 526 against Taranto on the year. Yeah, and it's a lot of off speed, a lot of spin, but not a lot of pace. And yeah. she's had trouble with her location. Just a freshman, so she'll learn. But boy, uh, if you don't if you don't throw with that speed, the first pitch to Brown is in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. You've got to hit your spots. And yeah. If you don't do that, you leave yourself wide open to getting knocked around the ballpark, which has happened to her a few times this year. Melissa Brown has had a whale of a weekend. Yeah, can we go ahead and name her MVP? <laughs> the 1-0. That's low and outside. Two balls and no strikes. First time she's hit leadoff here this weekend. Kaylee Tao getting a game off here today. So Brown back in her leadoff spot. But a couple of just outstanding defensive plays. Of course, we had the home run stealing catch that was on SportsCenter this morning. The 2-0. In there for a called strike, two and one. And uh, kudos to the folks at ESPN. It started at six last night, All right. moved it up to three where it belonged. It should have been <laughs> in the top half. It's a great play, best play I've ever seen on this field, to be quite honest. The two one now on its way to Alyssa. Pulls back the bunt, takes it high, three balls and one strike. On the year, Brown hitting 333, 13 to 39, 12 runs scored, a triple, and two RBIs. This weekend, though, she's five of nine with three runs scored, RBI, and she saved at least three runs defensively. The 3 1. This is high for ball four, and Alyssa Brown draws the walk. And here she is on the base pad. She tied the school record 
for in-game stolen bases against Missouri State yesterday. We've said it, what, maybe 10,000 times. It's as good as a double. She's going to go on this pitch of her next pitch and put a runner in scoring position for this batter who has been an RBI revelation this weekend. I say, if Melissa Brown's not the MVP of the Bama Bash, KB Sides is going to be. The sophomore from Dora, Alabama, now hitting 408 on the year, steps in. And the first pitch squares around to Bunt, but Bunt's at it, cannot get it down, but taking off and stealing second anyway is Alyssa Brown. So Brown with the stolen base. Now on the season, she's 13 of 14 and six for six on the weekend. And it honestly feels like more. Yeah. We were talking about that before the game. Four in one game, but goodness. I mean, she has just been on the move all weekend. The 0 1. Sides holds off on that one. Comes in a bit too high. One ball, one strike. Sides batting 408, as I said, 20 of 49. 16 runs scored. That leads the team. Two doubles, one home run, and 15 runs driven in. On base percentage of 434. Mm. And also, as of this morning, third in the SEC in hits. Would not have expected that before the year. That one hits the outside corner. A ball and two strikes now on sides. This weekend, she's seven of 13 with four runs scored and six RBIs. She mm. and Bailey Hemphill both have six this weekend. And, and again, Bailey's have come on two hits. You wouldn't expect KB Sides to be that player, though, but because she has the ability to slap or hit for power, just so much potential in that swing. The 0-1 is a high chopper to short. The stop made. The throw will be in time to get sides. Smart base running there by Alyssa Brown. She waits for the throw to be made by Mount at short and heads to third, and there's now one away. Well, not what KB Sides wanted there, but it's a productive out, and that's something Patrick Murphy was really stressing to the team yesterday. If you're going to get out, make it a productive out. Alyssa Brown moves to third. That'll work. That brings up Bailey and Bill. Yeah, speaking of the other yeah. player with six runs driven in this weekend, Bailey's done it in the most Bailey Hemphill possible <laughs> way. Go over the defensive lineman for the Warhawks here in just a moment. But first, the first pitch to the junior from Lafayette, Louisiana, Bailey Hemphill, and that's line to center. That's going to fall for a base hit past the center fielder all the way to the wall. Hemphill will round first and head to second with what I believe is going to be a stand-up double, although that was misplayed by Peterson in the outfield. Yeah, I don't know why Peterson took the angle that she did. Came in, tried to backhand it. I don't know if the wind maybe played some tricks on her out there, but Bailey Hemphill give her seven this weekend. And now here's the moment this crowd was waiting for. Caroline Hardy at the plate. Here comes Caroline Hardy, the senior from Vestavia Hills on her senior day stepping in. And she's had a good weekend as well. They are going to call it a single and an error for Hemphill. Also, Alyssa Brown scoring. We yep. know what that means. First pitch to Hardy in there for a called strike. So the see, single E8 brings home Brown. And, but she does still get an RBI, does Bailey. Brought to you by Tuscaloosa Toyota. Get your lowest price first at TuscaloosaToyota.com. The 0-1 to Caroline. Drops in again, nice pitch. No balls and two strikes. And Hardy really wanted that one. You can see her watching it come in. Good movement there on the pitch. Hardy batting 294 on the year, five of 17, two runs scored, a double, two home runs, five runs driven in. It is three for eight on the weekend with a double and a homer. The 0-2, that is outside, one ball, two strikes. And the best part about senior days as we get the stat of facts. And before we go into that, I'll let you do the Warhawks defense because I know we need to yeah. do Mc that. McKay in left, Peterson center, names in right, Shaw at third, Mount at short, Chris at second, Thibodeau at first, and Roble behind the plate. The one, two. Check swing right back to the pitcher. Toronto will make the throw over to first to get the out. Moving over to third is Hemphill, and there's two away. Well, one of those accidents there is Hardy was just trying to Check swing, get out of the way, and I guess we'll go over the facts next time she's up. Right, we'll get another chance. That will bring up Mary Schroeder, the senior from Houston, Texas. Well, we were talking about the, uh, the pregame festivities. You have Caroline Hardy playing a Sweet Caroline in her video, and everyone gets all misty-eyed with that. First pitch to Mary Schroeder, and that's going to get 
Nice stop there by the second baseman. The throw will not be in time. Coming in to score is Bailey Hemphill. A bang, bang play. I think the first base umpire, Michael Thibodeau, got it right. Schroeder barely beat it out, but that was a tremendous stop by Cresta, and the throw over was just not in time by just a half step at the most. The replay now showing the big screen, and I do think Schroeder beat it. But Yeah, Schroeder's fast enough. I think yeah. that that beat it out by just half a step, but how about Cresta? What a stop. I could tell you're about to say that one gets through because right. it looked like it would, <laughs> and Cresta somehow flew over and saved a potential double there, but... Mary Schroeder driving in another run, and Alabama really striking quickly here against ULM. So an RBI for Mary Schroeder makes it 2 nothing Crimson Tide here with two outs. Reagan Dyke steps in, pulls back her bunt at the first pitch to throw down to second as taking off and stealing second base is Mary Schroeder. Now another runner in scoring position with a 1-0 count on Reagan Dykes. But you add that, and then Molly Fickner gets the 22 roses from uh, the Alabama team and coaching staff representing the number 22 that she wore when she was a player here at Alabama and getting a great ovation from the crowd. One of the most popular players and coaches Bama's had is Molly Fickner. That one's in a little bit high. Two balls and no strikes. And youngest coach in D1 softball uh, came to Louisiana Monroe as the head coach after serving as the volunteer assistant in Alabama, then a year at Dartmouth, then a year at, I think it was Old Dominion before coming uh, to ULM. So you know that she really impressed an athletic director to be able to get this shot. Yeah. And you know that athletic director's not calling her every day wondering why you're not winning right now. It's it's very early in the process for her. Exactly, yeah, just building the program. I talked to Rachel Bobo about it yesterday, and she said, you know, she asked Molly about, you know, what are you bringing? What's your coaching philosophy? And Molly said about 90% what I learned at Alabama. So a lot of what she got here, she's implementing for ULM. Two O's high, three balls and no strikes now on Dykes. And again, that's a good philosophy to copy. I mean, yeah. Alabama's won a national <laughs> championship. So she said about 90% Alabama and 10% what she's picked up herself over the years. And if she's able to keep that up, I think she's going to be successful. Yeah. A it's lot just, of people really like her. It's just going to take a little time. The 3-0 is grounded to third. The stop made by Shaw. The throw over in time to get Dykes and to retire the side. But Alabama gets a couple of runs here in the bottom of the first inning. Two runs on two hits. There was one error and one runner left on base. We played one. Alabama leads it 2-0 over ULM here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. I got it. Head to the top of the second inning. Alabama with a 2-0 lead over Louisiana Monroe. Due up for the Warhawks here in the second is Robel, Hogan, and Shaw, 5-6-7, facing Courtney Geddens in the circle for Alabama. On a beautiful day here in Tuscaloosa, 58 degrees at first pitch under sunny skies. The wind is about the only somewhat negative thing because it is blowing uh, gale force winds at times here and it's kind of blowing across from left to right although it swirled for a little while there that inning it was blowing in and blowing out so i know it's blowing that. in a bit because our papers have flown around <laughs> yes. at some point they, they keep today. going everywhere <laughs> that will bring up the catcher Bree robel right-handed hitting first pitch from Geddens is lifted in foul ground on the right-hand side, and it will get out of play into the bullpen. No balls and one strike. On the senior, batting 207, 6 of 29, with two RBIs. Robo comes from Justin, Texas. The 0-1, low, one ball, one strike. Dimensions here at the Rhodes House, 200 down the lines, 220 to straightaway center field, six foot wall all the way around in the outfield, which is climbable as we saw yesterday by Alyssa Brown. The 1-1, one, one. 
in there for a called strike. The ball in two strikes now on Roble. I'm genuinely curious, Tom. We've talked about it a lot off air. I said some things on TV. I know you said some things, but we're together. <laughs> Everyone has said some things. We're together there. talking right. about it. Yes. Where does that catch rank in Alabama history, at least as long as you've been watching? One, two is swung on and missed. Four strike three. And that's the third strike out of the game by Courtney Gennins already here. Midway through the second inning. I think it's probably the most spectacular catch I've seen as far as athletic ability and uh, just um, just the, the amazing way yeah. that it was done. I mean, degree of difficulty right. certainly right up Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Anna Hogan steps in. Here comes the first pitch. Hits the inside corner for a called strike one. Now, because of the stakes of the situation, I might put a couple of the catches that Haley McClinney had out in center field against Oklahoma in the 2015 Super Regional here, maybe ahead of it just because of the stakes. But athletic ability and spectacularness, I think that's number one. Yeah. That's a bit outside, one ball, one strike. It's kind of along the same lines as uh, comparing Tyrone Prothro's catch against Southern Miss to uh, Tua to Smith in the national championship game. The Uh, it, you know, if you take about it, most spectacular play is probably Pro Throw's catch, but it was against Southern Miss in 2005. Right. The throw from Tua to Smith, because it won a national championship in walk-off fashion, is probably would rank higher, but just because. Yeah. Of that. So I, I think it's a similar situation. I would there. agree with that. I, yeah. I think certainly, all time, all factors in, it's got to be top three at at worst. Right. The one two, is grounded on two hops to third. Maddie Morgan makes the stop and the throw over in time for out number two. Nice play there by Maddie Morgan. and She's had a good weekend as well, offensively and defensively. And one of the best things about that catch from Melissa Brown was I saw a video put out on Twitter of just an ISO on her celebrating. And that, that was awesome. I don't know how somebody got that angle, but I'm glad they did. It is 30 seconds, just 30 seconds flat of Maddie Morgan just celebrating and dancing. And that's who she is. First pitch to Megan Shaw is fouled off. No balls and one strike. Two outs here in the top of the second. Two nothing Crimson Tide. It was really just spectacular. And Sarah yeah. Cornell tweeted it out. I saw a lot of people. I'm telling you, Alabama softball has been everywhere on Twitter this weekend. The Alyssa Brown catch has north of 240,000 views. The 0-1 is fouled off. No balls and two strikes. You have that. You have the inside the park home run by Skylar Wallace, which has been shown all over the place. And Skylar also the at bat before that catch by Alyssa Brown made a great catch in right field, yeah. jumping over uh, KB sides. The 0-2, fouled off, Shaw barely gets a piece, and we stay alive, no balls and two strikes. And I'll correct myself, Tom, because I don't want to sell Alyssa short, 258,000 views on and that's that catch. On, and that's on the Alabama softball uh, Twitter page. Correct. Not counting everyone who's retweeted it and how many people have viewed it there. Exactly. <laughs> the 0-2. Shaw lines it past Geddens, but Clark has it at second. The throw over's in time for out number three, and the Warhawks go down in order here in the top of the second inning. For the Crims or excuse me, for the Warhawks, no runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left. We head to the bottom of the second. Still 2-0 Crimson Tide here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. <laughs> It's time for Dash for your dinner contest. Today we have Greg and Taco and Kyle the Hot Sauce. Each will wait for Kyle the Little Hot Sauce. Whoever crosses the line first will eat today's winner. Our number one. Get set, go! This is our first ever battle. I could just turn it. I guess that would work, but. We head to the home half of the second inning. Alabama with a 2-0 lead over ULM. Bottom of the order to it for the Crimson Tide. Maddie Morgan, Claire Jenkins, Taylor Clark facing Carly Taranto in the circle for ULM. And I don't know a whole lot, Gray, but I know one thing. 
We need more grown-ups playing yes. the taco hot sauce mid-second mid inning race. I'm telling you, that when are fun. we going to go do that? We'll bring the <laughs> iRig down. We can, right. we, it's a mobile right. radio it setup. Yeah. We can do the race live. I think it'd be great, but you're right. right. It, it takes me back to Athens last year, remember, with Daddy Daughter Day? Yes. And they had the dads and daughters doing relay races. We need more adults involved in the activities <laughs> here at Rhodes. Maddie Morgan will lead things off. Sophomore from Linwood, Washington, steps in in the first pitch. Just misses outside for ball one. Morgan on the year, batting 367, 11 of 30, with eight runs scored, four doubles, 11 runs driven in. Morgan is two for seven with three runs scored, a double and an RBI here this weekend in and the it, Bamba Bash. It feels like more from Maddie, but those two hits have been huge. That pitch is outside, two balls and no strikes. She's also been walked three times and hit by a pitch, so she's been on base yeah. a lot. Yeah, there it is. And, and she had the double that got everything started last night against Minnesota in those rainy conditions. Fair by, yeah. I mean, a finger maybe. That one drops right in there for a called strike. Two and one now on Morgan. Coaching staffs for today's ball game, Patrick Murphy, the head coach of the Crimson Tide, the Hall of Famer in his 21st season. He's in the third base coaching box right now. 1,037 victories, 293 losses. The head coach of the Tide, a 780 winning percentage. That one is line foul over Patrick Murphy's head. Two balls and two strikes. The associate head coach is Allison Habits. She's in her 21st season. She's in the first base coaching box. Stephanie Van Braco pro throw in her eighth season back at her alma mater. The pitching coach, Bryn Dordell. The volunteer assistant, Kate Harris, director of softball operations. AC Antica, the athletic trainer. Nathan Sheehan, the sports information director. Scott Moyer, the video director for Alabama. The 2-2. Low, and the count is full. Three balls and two strikes. For ULM, their head coach, as we've talked about, is Molly Fickner in her first season. Assistant coaches, Jessica Thornton, Melanie Coyne, and the volunteer assistant is Michael Williams. That one drops in for a called strike three, and Morgan set down on strikes, and that was a nice pitch there by Toronto. Wow, what a pitch. I mean, a lot of movement there. 49 miles per hour is what the gun says. It was an off-speed curve, and absolutely bamboozling Morgan. That was really nice after a tough first inning. That brings up Claire Jenkins. Junior from Coleman, Alabama. Anto looks in, and here comes the first pitch. High for ball one. Jenkins batting 306 on the year, 11 for 36 with 11 runs scored, two doubles, a triple, two homers, and seven runs driven in. Two for 10 with a run scored here this weekend. The 1 0. Low and outside, two balls and no strikes. And we talked about Claire a lot that, you know, we saw her come out scorching hot in the Troy tournament the first weekend. Production's dropped a little bit, but she still is uh, is coming through and producing for this Crimson Tide offense. Yeah, it was a tough day yesterday for her, but overall she's been better at the plate, and that's what Patrick Murphy wanted. Two O's fouled back, two balls and one strike. Because again, I mean, I, I can't remember exactly what the average was, but it was honestly somewhere around 140 last year. And, I think the goal was just to get it up about 100 points, get it to 250. So at 300, that's well above what the expectations were for her, and it shows just how much work she put in in the offseason and how hard she's been trying to improve at the plate. The 2-1, Jenkins takes it outside. Two balls, or excuse me, three balls and one strike. 2 nothing Alabama here with one out in the bottom of the second inning. Nobody on for the tie. Alabama wearing the white over white today, white. Uh, vest jerseys with the crimson sleeves, white pants, crimson stripe, and crimson socks. So I think we've seen six of the seven uniform combinations now for Alabama. That one's in the dirt for ball four. And our sources tell us unofficially that we will see combination number seven later this week, potentially, oh, against yes. UAB. Hopefully that is true because I'm very excited to see the anthracite. <laughs> So one out, that brings up Taylor Clark, the second baseman for the Crimson Tide from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, the transfer from Virginia Tech. Junior still looking for her first hit as a member of the Crimson Tide. So, so far 0 for 6, getting her second start. First pitch. 
in there for a called strike. No balls and one strike. And Clark's been dealing with a couple of nagging injuries that have kind of held back from a couple of opportunities where you might have seen her here in the first few weeks, but trying to work herself in. She's had some good swings, just a bit unlucky a couple times, had a tough line out out to left once. No one is high, one ball, one strike. Getting her first at bat of the weekend. And this is a weekend, Tom. We really haven't seen a lot of variety in the lineup. Chloe Anderson has just appeared once. We saw Kayla Davis one time, and that's really about it. The 1-1. One, one. That one is a ground ball well hit to short, but the stop made by the shortstop one over, and they turn the double play. Mount makes a nice backhanded stop. Quick throw to Cresta, who made the turn to Thibodeau. And the double play is turned, and it gets the Warhawks out of the inning. For Alabama here in the second. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We played two, still 2 nothing Crimson Tide here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. We head to the top of the third inning. Alabama with a 2-0 lead over ULM. Due up for the Warhawks here in the third. It's Names, Peterson, and McKay, 8-9-1, facing Courtney Geddens in the circle. And he's come back over from the TV dark side. And I'll turn things over <laughs> to Gray Robertson here for the third inning. Yes, back on the radio. Although, kind of, we're on kind the stream of, today. Right. We're, we're double dipping this afternoon <laughs> as we see Charlie Names step in, and I guess this is her first action of the year because she is a blank line on our stat sheet, and the first swing is right back. I'm also going to do the honor of adding Charlie Names to the 2019 All-Name team because, <laughs> I mean, her last name is Names, so right. we, we have to there. include Charlie Names, a sophomore from Sheridan, Arkansas. I would also like to uh, nominate uh, from Minnesota Natalie Den Hartog. Ah, uh, yes, uh, I will add her as well. <laughs> it's a good list. Last year's winner was Precious Bird Song from Middle Tennessee. <laughs> we sent her a nice wave. Here's the 01, and speaking of waving, names waves at that rise ball, 02. Next up for Alabama, the tide does travel to UAB on Wednesday. 5.50 the airtime. 6 o'clock will be the first pitch here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Here's the 0-2. Chase pitch low and away. One ball, two strikes. Elsewhere on the Crimson Tide Sports Network, Alabama baseball. They have just gone final, actually. So wrapping it up there, Alabama gets a 6-0 win over Ball State. So they win that series two games to one over the Cardinals. Quick day today over at the Joe. 1-2. Fouled off. Way over by pass the Alabama bullpen and we'll do it again. One ball, two strikes to Charlie Names. You say Alabama earlier today, they finished up a uh, halted game with Ball State from yesterday and the Cardinals won that game eight to five. But Alabama bounces back and wins the series. One, two off speed by Courtney Gettins. Absolutely fools Charlie Names. She goes down swinging one away here in the top of the third. Coming up a little bit later on on the network is Batman women's basketball. The Tide hosting Georgia. 5.50 will be the airtime. Or excuse me, 4.50 will be the airtime for the 5 o'clock tip-off. It's been a better weekend this weekend for yes. Alabama athletics after a tough go last time around as Victoria Peterson steps in. And the first pitch comes in for a ball. Peterson on the year, 233, seven hits and 30 at-bats, five runs scored, one double, two runs driven in.
for the senior from Monroe, Louisiana. 1-0 swung on and missed, one ball, one strike. Hey, ULM had a rough go of it here in Tuscaloosa. They lost to Minnesota 5-0, and Missouri State 4-3 on the first day. Lost to Missouri State 4-1 in an earlier day, a 13-1 loss to Minnesota. The 1-1, this one right over to Claire Jenkins. Uh-oh, almost dropped it. The throw to first is not in time. That might be an error on Claire Jenkins as she had it in her glove and just mishandled it, and Peterson safe at first. She's walking around, just can't believe that one. It just popped out of her glove, and she just, with her bare hand, mishandled it, like yeah. you said. And, and that is about as rare as you'll see in the yeah. field, an error by Claire Jenkins. And that is what it's called. So the top of the order comes back in for Louisiana Monroe. Yeah, first error of the season, charge to Claire. McKay showed bunt, first pitch missed. One ball, no strikes. McKay singled over the shortstop back in the first inning. The lone hit for the Warhawks so far. 2-0 Alabama, top of the third, one out, one on here against Louisiana Monroe, the homecoming for Molly Fickner, senior day for Caroline Hardy. It's just a big day all around. The 1-0, fouled off, one ball, one strike. Throughout the day today, we'll give you Cook's Pest Control scoreboard updates, Cook's Pest Control, and the Sensicron system, the unbeatable combination for termite protection. There's a lot. Yes. As we'll always. Give you the finals from yesterday. Before we talk about what's happened so far today, Games featuring SEC teams. First is 1 1 to McKay. And I think that hit her out of the box. Yes, it did. It was a foul little slap attempt by McKay. She was out of the box. It came up off the ground and hit her on the left arm. And because of the rule, there's two away for the Warhawks. Tough break, but that's, it's in the rule. And we've seen it happen to Alabama a couple times this year. And so now Jacqueline Cresto will step in with two outs. The first pitch from Gettins. Going with the pitch as Reagan Dykes missed that one. Peterson was getting the steal. She'll get it. Reagan Dykes, just a wayward throw there. And Peterson safe at second with two outs. I didn't see if maybe Cresta might have been in the way or something might have affected that throw. I've never seen a Reagan Dykes throw that off I just, target before. I just think she was a little bit off balance jumping yeah. out from her, uh, from her crouch behind the plate. And Sailed on her. The 1-0. Low, two balls and no strikes. Finals from yesterday, Ole Miss over Sam Houston State 2-1. Florida, with their continuing battle with Illinois State, a 10-2 victory. So uh, let me know when we have a conference <laughs> series against Illinois State. And yes. If I should ask Greg Sankey, we'll have spring meetings there sometime as the 2-0 is fouled off, two balls and one strike. Georgia beat UMass 4-0. Oregon over Texas A&M 7-5. Mississippi State beat Georgia Tech 4-2. It was Syracuse dropping an 8-0 decision to Florida. Georgia over Belmont 8-1. Texas beat Ole Miss 3-2. South Carolina over Youngstown State 10-1. Drake with an upset over Arkansas. The 2-1. Eventually found the outside corner for a strike. Two balls and two strikes. And by the way, Mary Half started that Drake game as well. So two upset right. losses this weekend. Both starts from Mary Half, which I never would have told you. That was a 3-1 win by Drake. Auburn beat Eastern Illinois 6-0. Auburn also beat North Dakota State 10-2. The 2-2 misses, full count. Kentucky over Cal, 5-0. Arkansas bounced back with that 15-3 win over SIEU. And Danielle Gibson hits a home run cycle. <laughs> I mean, we saw a lot of things in softball we've never seen before. Payoff pitch to Cresta. This one hit hard towards first. Hardy's got it, and she'll step on the bag for out number three. So a Warhawks batter reaches on an error, but can't get a hit, and the batters behind her can't bring her around, and the side is retired. Alabama still up 2-0, and the Crimson Tide coming up to bat here in the bottom of the third. That on the other side here in the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Visit BigAlexKidsClub.com for more information and to join the Big Alex Kids Club. 
for free today. My fans were here for Finley. Today, Chick-fil-A loyal nugget of the game. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa as we see the Crimson Tide come back to the plate. 2-0 Alabama due up for the home team, Alyssa Brown, KB Sides, and Bailey Hemphill. And as Alyssa Brown comes back to the plate, shall we wax poetic once again, Tom Canterbury, <laughs> about the weekend that has been for this junior? Yeah, she's, one, she's walked and scored so far here today, including a sullen base. She tied the school record with sullen bases in a single game against Missouri State. And as I said, she's saved at least three runs in the field for Alabama. She had the spectacular two home run or two run home run stealing catch and then also threw out a batter at, at home uh, like yesterday as well. Just a tremendous weekend for Alyssa. First pitch misses and you know what as I was going back and re-watching and re-watching and re-watching <laughs> the Alyssa Brown play what's been completely overshadowed just the throw to first. Right. Uh, I mean after making the catch just complete reaction time the third of first sailed over the bag here's the 1 0 -oh. that one finds a strike zone one ball one strike I mean I couldn't believe it no one makes that throw right and really and it's, it's really testament to her as well the how she has responded from the change in the batting order she right didn't sulk she didn't do anything else like that when she was moved to the nine hole from the leadoff position after she struggled a little bit was one still getting one. on base, but wasn't getting the, the base hits and the walks like, like she needed to to be on base as much right. as, as Patrick Murphy wanted. So, but you know, she just kind of took it in stride and has, has produced in the nine hole and has obviously not allowed, to, not allowed it to affect her fielding at all. Absolutely, yeah, Patrick Murphy wanted her motivated, I would say, that's happened. Here's a 2-1, swung on and missed. 49 mile per hour off speed, two balls and two strikes. Finishing up that Cook's Best Control scoreboard update from yesterday's games, the SEC teams. LSU beat Cal State, Cal State Northridge 8 0. Washington over Missouri 6 3. UCLA over Kentucky 12 4. And Missouri beat New Mexico State 15 0. And Kentucky had the lead for a while there as the 2 2 poked foul over towards Patrick Murphy. We'll do it again. Two balls and two strikes to Alyssa Brown. Bottom of the third, no score. Alabama up 2 0 on Louisiana Monroe. Kentucky continues there. I think they're Tough. nine and seven. Right, and That's, and I think they still should be in the top 25. I they agree. are playing <laughs> the toughest non-conference schedule I've ever seen. I hope that they get just a week of Illinois State <laughs> next <laughs> week. Say, yes. No offense to Illinois State, but right. they're not as good as UCLA and all those other teams Kentucky's face. The 2-2, two -two, this one over towards second, making the play as Cresta and actually a bit closer than ULM probably wanted, but in time to get Alyssa Brown for out number one. Games currently underway featuring SEC teams. Florida with a 6-0 lead over Florida A&M. Troy still holding on to a 1-0 lead over Auburn. That's now in the top of the fourth. And uh, for a while, Auburn was being no hit, mm. but they've got a few hits now. That's a Troy team Alabama's beaten twice. Just saying, as KB side <laughs> steps in, and the first pitch finds the strike zone, 0-1. Finals, Texas beat Ole Miss 7-0. Florida over Syracuse, 8-2. LSU. Gets by Michigan 2-1. to one. Auburn beat Villanova 11-1. to one. Georgia over Belmont 3-0. Mississippi State shuts out Georgia Tech 9-0. And Virginia, uh, Tennessee beat Virginia 11-1. The 0-1 comes in for a strike. 0-2 to KB Sides, who is 0-for-1 on the day. And may I interject, you want to hear a surprising record. Michigan is 6-8 and eight this year. Yeah. Just a tough season for them. Discussing that yesterday, we were talking about Mich uh, Minnesota and where they're going to stand in the Big Ten. We've seen a lot of surprise teams in the Big Ten this year. CO2 misses, one ball, two strikes. Seen both, yeah, both Illinois and Indiana ranked. Indiana, I believe, is still undefeated. Yeah, they had a comeback uh, win yesterday and stayed undefeated. Minnesota, I think Pfizer's one of, if not the top pitcher in, in the Big Ten. Uh, we were seeing Ohio State's been ranked. We're seeing a lot of teams kind of taking advantage 
of Michigan being a little bit down from where they normally are. One, two, just misses. Two balls and two strikes to KB sides. You're right, and Carol Hutchins, excellent coach, one of the best. I think she's still the all-time wins leader. Uh, just inexplicable, and they've got a great pitcher. Megan Bobian was excellent last year, but I don't know. I don't know. Six and eight. Here's the two-two. This one poked right towards third. The throw to first is in time. ULM responding well in the field as Shaw gets it to first for out number two. <laughs> Shaw dropped the ball and started running into the dugout. There's only two outs. <laughs> well, as I learned yesterday on TV, math is hard sometimes. <laughs> and it, uh, it, it's... It can be complicated when you look at Bailey Hemphill's numbers. Now three hits on the weekend and seven runs driven in. How do you do that? Well, a couple three-run shots over the last couple days and then had an RBI single back in the first. First pitch to Hemphill low for ball one. So she leads the team now with 23 Tuscaloosa mm. Toyota RBIs through 15, almost 15 total games. That's a nice start. And updated as of this morning, third in the SEC in runs driven in and fifth in home runs. So pretty good. Yeah. And that's good. You know, if, okay, if she's going to have a rough weekend, fine. But if the couple hits she gets are as impactful as they've been, Patrick Murphy will take that every day. 1-0 low, two balls and no strikes. Well, and then we're seeing, too, the Bailey Hemphills on this team, Kaylee Taos, that are taking advantage of some of the uh, – Mid, mid major type teams you're playing some of the uh, lesser big player big teams because is that when misses low three balls and no strikes that's something that was kind of missing the last couple of years and one of the reasons why Alabama's offensive totals weren't where they normally are right is because Bama just wasn't just hammering the teams they had an opportunity to do so they're doing that here this year yeah you're exactly right here's a 3-0 hi didn't want to give Hemphill anything to hit after the RBI back in the first and she trots to second one on, two outs, bottom of the third, 2 nothing Alabama, and Caroline Hardy coming to the plate here on her senior day. And we've got the facts ready, right, Tom? Yes. You know why she wears number 34? It's Tell me, Tom. It's because her favorite UA player was Charlotte Morgan and really considers it an honor, which I certainly understand, to share that number with yeah. one of the greatest all time at Alabama, Charlotte. And looked like Charlotte Morgan last night with that, or yesterday with that home run against Minnesota's first pitch fouled off, excuse me, Friday. That was the home run, then the home run against Arizona. That's him, uh, Hardy, excuse me, 0 for 1 on the day. And that home run was on the first pitch. Yes. And that's something we've talked about a lot. When she attacks mm -hmm. in her at-bats, it that I'll find out that stat. I'll look that up over the weekend or over this week before we get to UAB. When she attacks, I'm sure the batting average is much higher. 0-1 high, one ball, one strike. Some of her favorite things, Caroline loves Diet Coke. As do I. Uh, history movies, watching hmm. golf, and Beyonce. And Beyonce is her walk-up song, yeah. so it makes sense. Sure. Golf as well, I like that. Justin Thomas having a good day today, former Alabama golfer. Here's the 1-1. Finds a mm. strike zone, one ball, two strikes. Most importantly, Caroline's going to graduate in May, history degree, planning to pursue a graduate degree in sports management, start a path to college coaching. And, yeah, she's definitely, you can tell, she's yeah. got coach written all over she is consistently the one that you know is always watching film every second always preparing as the one two misses outside two balls and two strikes her knowledge of the game is just immaculate and, and yes. she'll i expect her if she doesn't have a job immediately after she graduates to be in a tv booth if not coaching somewhere mm. and then using that to coach i mean she's she's got softball in her blood and all the coaches write, write a little, little note on the card that's handed out and that's what they talk about coaching up the teammates yeah that one barely tipped this is going to be a tough play the throw to first is away and hardy is aboard going to third is bailey Hempill. it was about as small a dribbler as humanly possible off the bat of caroline hardy probably not how she imagined she would reach base today but runners on the corners two outs here in the bottom of the third bailey showing off the wheels there getting <laughs> yes. down to first and, and, she, and she did make Toronto have to make a, a, probably hurry her throw a little bit more than she wanted to, and it threw it, and she threw it wide, so Caroline's on base, and 
Do it I any mean, way you can. Sometimes. It was basically a bunt, and right. you're not looking at Caroline Hardy thinking she's about to lay down a bunt with two outs at Bailey Hemphill mm -hmm. at first, but that's pretty much what happened, and the ULM defense just not prepared at all. And now Mara Schroeder with a chance to drive in some runs. We feel like she might be on the cusp of all-tournament team with a good day today. One for one with a single and a run driven in back in the first. And also I will add, Tom, on the Caroline Hardy fact list, big movie buff and critic and loves the Oscars. That's tonight as the first pitch to Mayor Schroeder misses outside for ball one. And Hardy texted me yeah. and uh, asked if I want to watch the Oscars with her because I too love oh, movies wow. and write about movies and well. I'm pulling for Roma tonight. Are you a big movie guy, Tom? I will not be watching. You will not be no. watching? It's okay. They don't have a host. It's probably going to be boring. <laughs> I just want to see who wins. Here's the 1-0. Low and away. Two balls and no strikes. <laughs> no one gets together more <laughs> to talk about how great they are than, than Hollywood. <laughs> You're yeah, exactly right. There, I, there are hundreds of award shows. I know the Oscars is the best one. I am excited for the – I will probably watch the openings. I want to see the Queen yeah. Adam Lambert open. So yeah. that, I'll be – that I'll watch. Uh, but then I'll turn it off before I start getting preached to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I know you've seen one of the movies because we saw Black Panther together yes. in a Hattiesburg last I, year as I have ULM actually talks in the circle. Yes, it's so we'll devolve into an Oscar conversation yeah. real well, quickly. Hey, yeah, we've but, got yeah. our time out. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, but, yeah, I, and I liked Black Panther a lot. I've actually seen a couple of the movies, which is Oh, really? Rare. What else did you see? I'm trying to remember, there's another one that's that's nominated for the best actor, the best movie that I can't remember which one it was, uh, but I've seen something. You've, just Bohemian Rhapsody, have you seen that? I have wanted to. Maybe, it, maybe I, I wanted to see good. them. Really? It, no, wow. Not okay. good. Right. What about A Star is Born? Go see that I, I've, with I've the seen, family. I've heard the Probably not with the family. family. No, right. not with the family. <laughs> with the wife. Heard, heard the uh, soundtrack, but I haven't yeah. seen the movie. That's what I, I'm excited to hear Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga tonight. Anyway, so. Anyway, softball. Yeah, there's softball <laughs> happening. Anyway, Caroline Hardy loves the Oscars. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll tweet a picture or something tonight if we watch it together as the 2-0 comes in for a strike, two balls and one strike. Two outs, runners on the corners. Alabama leading 2-0 on Louisiana Monroe. A fun day here at Rhodes. The sun is out. We're practically, practically giddy here in the booth <laughs> because of it. Molly Fickner back, former Alabama player, and Caroline Hardy senior day. The 2-1 to Schroeder. Oh, boy. Nice movement from Taranto. Two balls and two strikes. Interestingly enough, Tom, Alabama has not allowed a run in the first, third, or seventh inning this year, but the third, the second lowest scoring output. And that's after, remember, the nine runs against Murray State earlier this year as the 2-2 two -two misses high, three balls and two strikes. It might have been ten. I, I can't yeah. remember. It was a lot. But not a lot of scoring in the huh. third inning magic. Yeah, it's like we, we, we flipped the magic. <laughs> it's every other inning now. <laughs> Full count to Maris Schroeder. Single back in the first to drive in a run. Runners on the corners, two outs. Payoff pitch to Schroeder. This one right back up the middle, fielded nicely by Taranto, and the throw to first is in time. And Louisiana Monroe continues to battle as they get out of the jam. It's 2-0 Alabama, Warhawks coming back to the plate here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Do you see Vice? I mean, it's like, are you a big But, I mean, it's also really cool, like the live aim contest. Very well, and you will be the third base coming out. Last question, the first person to raise the flag will have a chance to answer. Here's Roma. Next to the next one will be Roma. Roma is. Roma might be like, if you don't like. How many colors are in the rainbow? If you're watching movies critically, Roma might not be that exciting. But as just like a movie itself, which is stunning. That's right, Very well, congratulations. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa, the final day of the Easton Bama Bash here at Rhodes Stadium, Alabama leading Louisiana Monroe 2 0 as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Do up Thibodeau, Mount, and Roble, and I will turn it back over to my partner, Tom Canterbury, for the remainder of the game. Thanks so much, Gray. As we head to the top of the fourth inning, do up for the Warhawks in their light gray uniforms here today. 
It's going to be Thibodeau, Mount, and Roble facing Courtney Geddens in the circle for Alabama. And Courtney's pitched well so far in the three innings. One hit, no runs, no walks, four strikeouts, 43 pitches, and 30 strikes. So nice ratio there. The first pitch to Thibodeau is low and inside. Four ball one. Thibodeau's 0 for 1. She struck out her first time up, one of four K's on the day by Courtney. And when I look at Gettin's numbers, Tom, I circle two numbers. One, the no walks. That's good. That shows no nerves. And the hit, that was to lead off the game. Nothing since. That ball's fouled off at the plate. One ball, one strikes on Thibodeau. Senior from Lake Charles, Louisiana. And that's one thing, too, you're talking about what Molly Fickner is going to have to do to build this program, program up. That ball is popped up in foul ground on the third base side. And making the catch is Maddie Morgan as Patrick Murphy had to dive out of the way of that one. Yeah, I don't know what it is about this weekend, Tom. We've seen a lot of highlight plays, but also just a lot of pop-up drops. And Maddie Morgan trying her best not to be a victim there, fighting the wind, fighting her coach as well to yeah. try and find it. Good play by the sophomore over at third. It is a high sky here today, dealing with the sun for the first time all weekend. Jaden Mount steps in, the first pitch to her in there for a called strike. Mount grounded out her first time up. But as you were saying, and I think I know where you were getting at, Molly yeah. Fickner's got to recruit Louisiana right. uh, and get in the players from that state because that's a very talent-rich state. Mm -hmm. You see how good LSU is every year, Louisiana Lafayette. That's a one-hopper pass Geddens and pass Courtney Jen uh, Jenkins into center field. Or a seeing eye single there by Mount, the second hit of the ball game given up by Gettins. Well, just a perfect amount of pop right there, right over Courtney Gettins, just a bit too tall for her. And Claire Jenkins was ranged over a bit to her right. It was a long run. It was a weird hop. Good job by Mount getting aboard. And again, Louisiana Monroe, very impressed. They have, they've had a tough weekend, but they have right. fought in every single game they've been in, and they're continuing to fight here against Alabama. That's what I was, you know, we were talking with uh, Louisiana Monroe's SID here that, you know, taking a look at this season, they rarely get blown out. They're in a lot of these games that they've lost. It's just, you know, a couple bad luck plays going one or the other. The you know, pitching has struggled at times. It's just been, the, you know, they had a crazy game against UAB. First pitch to Bree Roble is grounded to second. The stop made by Clark to throw over in time to get the catcher at first, moving to second as Mount, and there's two away. I'll reference the play first because Taylor Clark, what a move. She was moving to her right because the runner was going, and Clark had to completely stop her motion, reverse her body, and go back to her left to get it. Good job by her. And that UAB game that you're talking about, UAB was up 12-0 through two innings and eventually won 12 to 11. So Louisiana Monroe, they've got fight. They've got that right. Molly Fickner spirit. Anna Hogan steps in. The first pitch of her is a fly ball to shallow center on the run and unable to make a diving catch is Alyssa Brown. They'll throw to second to get Hogan trying to stretch that into a double, but coming in to score was Mount, and she does get in before the run scores. I, or excuse me, does get in before the out is recorded, so I believe the run will count. It well, should. Yes, yeah, it there will. It is. Yeah, he's pointing. The run did count. So that will do it for ULM here, but they do cut the lead in half for Alabama. One run on one hit, no errors, and no runners left. Excuse me, on two hits and no runners left for ULM here in the fourth. We head to the bottom, 2-1 Crimson Tide here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. <laughs>
head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Alabama with a 2-1 lead over ULM, but the Warhawks did score in the top of the fourth inning on a single by Anna Hogan. She was thrown out a second. It was a diving chance there for Alyssa Brown, but she was unable to make the catch, and I think the win had something to do with that yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Alyssa Brown make spectacular catches all throughout her career, but she was fighting Mother Nature there, too. And when you look at where she landed, if you follow where she was, that should be KB Side's ball, but Alyssa Brown was carried all the way over to right field because of the wind gusts. First pitch to Reagan Dykes in there for a called strike. Dykes, Morgan, and Jenkins do up here, six, seven, eight. Facing Carly Toronto in the circle for ULM, and after allowing two runs in the first inning, she's actually pitched very well here today. Two runs on two hits. Two runs, one of those earned. The 0 one is high. One ball, one strike, three walks, and one strikeout. But for a pitcher whose ERA was north of 20 entering today's game, only allowing the two hits to a very potent Alabama offense halfway through the game is pretty impressive. Yeah, and I have to credit that off-speed drop curve, about 49 miles per hour. It's been working today. There it is right there. Drops in a bit too low, two balls and one strike. But that pitch, A, I, I, I don't know how that missed, maybe a touch low, but B, I'm really impressed Reagan Dykes didn't go after that. It's just a tantalizing pitch, but it's got enough movement that if you go after it, you better hope you get some of it because you could look really foolish swinging at a pitch like that. The 2-1 is grounded to third, and that's off the third baseman's glove, glove, Shaw. No play for her. We'll see how it's scored, but either way, Alabama has a runner on first here to start things off in the fourth. Yeah, Reagan Dykes isn't Alyssa Brown fast. She's not Mary Schroeder fast, but she's fast enough. And you know, if she's given a window like that, and you know, Shaw had a chance, but just off her glove, Reagan Dykes is going to beat it out. And you know, another player, even though it's not a hit, another player that needs to get on base, needs to feel comfortable at the plate, needs to get that confidence up because you know, you've got about a couple, a couple weeks of unranked opponents, and then once SEC play starts, you need everybody focused and ready to go and feeling good with their swing. First pitch to Maddie Morgan, low and away for ball one. That is an E5, the third error of the ball game by the Warhawks. One run on three hits, three errors, two runners left for ULM. Alabama, two runs, two hits, one error, and three runners left on base. That is something we've discussed a lot, Tom, the future schedule for Alabama. The 1-0, Morgan outside, two balls, no strikes. We have said that we don't think the Crimson Tide will see another opponent that's in the top 25 until South Carolina. I, maybe A&M sneaks right. in. Depends, yeah. But, you know, no could, one next could week. Could go the entire month of March. Basically. Yeah. Missouri won't be ranked. The 2-0 is outside, three balls and no strikes. Mississippi State, I, you know, maybe they, I, I haven't looked at their schedule, yeah. maybe it's gaudy enough they could build up some traction, sneak in at 25, but Odds are the next ranked opponent will be April 5th at South Carolina. And Minnesota just barely qualified, being ranked in one poll this week. The 3-0, off speed and high for ball four. And now Alabama runners on first and second with nobody out. Opportunity to try to get that run back, which Alabama's done a great job all year of answering back when the opponent scores. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, coming in to the weekend, six innings, eight allowed runs. They had scored in the back half of four of those. And then this weekend, doing that a couple times, once against Missouri State after they scored, or twice actually, against Missouri State yesterday, doing it, you know, an inning late against Minnesota last night, doing it against Missouri State in game one, and then, you know, Minnesota didn't right. score in game one. <laughs> but responding has been the theme all year. Yeah. And we've heard it preached by Allison Habits. And this team is really responding, and that's why, as we've talked a lot about, this feels different this year. Right. This team just feels different. First pitch to Claire Jenkins in the dirt. One ball, no strikes. And some of that is responding again. We've talked about how much the sophomores in this year's team worked after last year and moved up. And when we talk about it, I don't want it to make it sound like last year's team was terrible right. or even the years before. They were, you know, the, two years ago, you're a game away from the World Series. Last year, you're two games away. Absolutely. But there's, there's a level, and then there's the next step up that I think this team has, has maybe taken. That pitch hits the outside corner. One ball, one strike on Claire Jenkins. Well, there's a line. I mean, right. how many times last year, the last couple of years, have we seen players come up, even players on this team, with the bases loaded or chances to drive in runs, and it just didn't happen. It's happening this year. Right. I mean, look at the Minnesota game last night. I'll say something after this pitch. 
And Jenkins lays down a nice bunt there. Toronto comes out of the circle and makes the throw over just in time to get Jenkins. That was a nice play actually by Presta coming over from second to cover first as the throw was low. But she stepped on the bag to get the out. The sacrifice bunt does move the runners over. Now both in the scoring position with one away. You're exactly right about Cresta. She was a bit delayed coming over, so to use her speed and get there in time, really nice work by her. And if I had to say that there is a skill on the team that's a bit underrated, it's Claire Jenkins as a bunter. We've seen her, she doesn't beat it out often, but the bunts always make the defense have to make a play. And that's something that you want from a player like Claire. It's, it's a very effective tool that she has. That brings up Taylor Clark. Second baseman grounded into a double player first time up and the first pitch to her is a bit high for ball one. Still looking for her first base hit as a member of the Crimson Tide after transferring in, playing her first two season at, seasons at Virginia Tech and now would be a great time. Up 2-1 here in the bottom of the fourth, one out, but two runners in scoring position against Monroe, the 1-0. That one hits the outside corner on the off speed, one ball, one strike. And and the fans not happy with that call from Ted Boyles behind the plates. As I was saying a moment ago, though, Tom, the Minnesota game last night, I was doing TV with Rachel Bobo, and you know we're in a situation where the game could have been called had Alabama not scored in the bottom of the fifth inning. Right. And uh, I asked Bobo, you know, finish the story after this pitch. The 1-1, one, one, high, two balls, one strike. I asked Bobo if there was a possibility that Patrick Murphy in the dugout said, look, people, if we don't score here, this game could be over. And that was through four innings. Amber Pfizer had mowed people down. Yeah. And they just came out and exploded. The hitting was contagious. And that's something that is just different about this team. They're, they're responding immediately in games, which is nice to see. The 2-1, low and away. Three balls and one strike on Taylor Clark. One out here in the fourth, trying to extend the 2-1 lead over the Warhawks. Well, you said it. I'll say it again. If you want to get your first hit for Alabama, right now would be a great time. Anything out there has a chance to score two. And there's a lot of room out in the outfield. The 3-1, that one is fouled off of Clark's foot in the batter's box. So foul ball there, even though they threw on to first. Count is now full, three balls and two strikes. Game's never really felt in doubt for Alabama, but with ULM scoring there in the top of the fourth, you'd like to see the offense kind of come on here this inning. Yeah. Give some of these players like Taylor Clark, who haven't really had the chance to respond to moments, an opportunity to do that. 3-2. Off speed, foul back. Gets a piece, stays live. Three balls and two strikes. That is a great piece of hitting by Taylor Clark right there. Recognizing the off speed a touch late, but slowing her swing enough to get a piece of it. And that one was 47 miles per hour, right. the slowest we've seen from Toronto. That, that was an impressive job of holding off by Clark. Just had to spoil it, foul to stay alive and get another pitch. And now probably going to see something in the high, low 60s come inside here. Here it comes, and it's low for ball four. So Clark draws the walk, turns the line up over, and we head back to the top with Alyssa Brown. So you know it's coming. And Taylor Clark was waiting probably for a pitch in on the hands. Didn't come, it was low, good eye there, not swinging at one out of his zone, and bases loaded. I don't think Alyssa Brown's going to get a shot, unfortunately, but. It's gonna be Kaylee Tao stepping oh. up to get an at-bat here. Tao, the usual starter for the Crimson Tide, is getting a day off from the starting lineup, but is going to come in to pinch hit for the Crimson Tide. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, I believe this is her first pinch hitting attempt in her Alabama career. I think it is this year. I would not be Maybe surprised. Maybe one last year, but. Yeah, at some point last year, she had a pinch hitting spot in a similar situation as this. But now she will come in with the bases loaded, one out. Alabama leading it two to one. Tao for the weekend is two of nine with five runs scored, a double and two runs driven in. The leading hitter batting average wise on this Crimson Tide team, batting 412. First pitch, low and away. One ball, no strikes. Tao is 14 to 34 with 18 runs scored. That leads the team. Six doubles, a home run, and 12 runs driven in. 
All right, so she started 55 games last year of the 56. So there's one in there somewhere. <laughs> I will not file through it, but one where she did not start. The 1-0 drops in for a called strike. One ball and one strike now on Tao. It's been, as you mentioned, kind of a weird weekend for Tao. She's had a couple big hits, but has really been quiet and has had chances at the top of the order. I mean, we've seen why Patrick Murphy moved her up. The lineup maneuver has worked, but hasn't been as yeah. consistent as, as I'm sure he'd like. 1-1, one, one. curves too far inside, two balls and one strike. Tao has walked five times. Yeah, including the big one last night against Minnesota that I will not comment anymore on. <laughs> I've said on, too much already. That's, that's all we need to say. Yeah, I am. Bryn Dordell called me Twitter famous today, and, <laughs> and Patrick Murphy said something, and now I just don't want to be reminded of it anymore. <laughs> the 2-1 pitch, Tao takes that one on the outside corner, and the count's even up, two balls and two strikes. It been a little bit of a makeup call there yeah. on the, for the previous pitch. I was about to say, that first pitch looked right down the middle, if not maybe a touch inside. That one a bit outside. Makeup call, and now Tao hasn't really put a swing on any of these. Maybe getting a read, but... You want to attack right here. The pitch, and that's grounded to third. They'll come home to get the force at home. The fielder's choice erases Reagan Dykes. Tao's on first, and there's now two away. And you could see it. Kaylee was having trouble seeing the pitches. That's why she was showing Bunn on that two-strike call. That's something, as Rachel Bobo was explaining to me yesterday on the TV broadcast, that's something the hitters do to try and line up the strike zone and get a better feel of where the ball's going to come in. And it, it took a, a minute for Kaylee Tao to really get her bearings, was able to put it in play, but not the hit she wanted. But an RBI chance for KB Sides once again. Sides has had a great weekend RBI-wise. She's now second on the team with runs driven in. Big chance here. 0 for 2 so far, the first pitch. Floats in for a called strike. No balls and one strike on the sophomore from Dora. His 0 for 2 day has dropped her back below the 400 mark. Disappointingly. <laughs> Come on, KB, do better. She's now at 392. I will say this, both first two at bat, she was slapping. She's now hitting for power. I think that's when she's at her best. Let's see if it's a better result. The 0-1 is grounded to short. The stop made. The throw will be in time from Mount. And Alabama leaves the bases loaded here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And ULM keeps it as a 2-1 lead. This reminds me of the Murray State game. Patrick Murphy said you can't give a team hope. Alabama's giving ULM hope right now. Yep. Need to squash that in this game. Otherwise, we might have a real upset. For the Crimson Tide here in the fourth, they get no runs. Uh, no hits. There was one ULM error and three runners left on base. We played four, 2 1 Crimson Tide here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. And join us next weekend for the Eastern Crimson Classic. Tickets are available for purchase by calling 348 now. Or visit Wolfside.com. Congratulations to Annie and Case for being our team win of the game, courtesy of Burger King. And for some team win of the game, you see the free one that I'm going to sponsor for Burger King. Thanks to Burger King for being a proud sponsor of Alabama Softball. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa, kind of a barn burner here in the final day of the Easton Bama Bash between Alabama and Louisiana Monroe. The Crimson Tide leading the Warhawks 2-1 as we enter into the top of the fifth. Due up for ULM. We've got Shaw, Names, and Peterson and a lot of defensive changes for Alabama as they have completely shifted around the outfield. Kaylee Tao is in right now. Mara Schroeder is in center and over in left is KB sides as the first pitch into Shaw's bunted fair. Reagan Dykes throw to first is in time. Plenty of time. What a great play by Reagan Dykes for out number one here in the top of the fifth. 
Well, Coach Murphy said in the pregame interview that he was planning on switching some people around as the game goes along here today. I didn't think that would mean taking right. out Alyssa. I bet she maybe has moved to DP. I don't know. I, well, I don't know. She was know. pinch hit for by for Tao. So right. Yeah. This is a straight switch. Interesting. So that first pitch thrown to Charlie Names is in there for a strike. No balls and one strike now. On Names still looking for her first hit. Swing and a miss. No balls and two strikes. Came in with zero stats entering today's ball game. It just evaporated into, <laughs> I guess not evaporated, but appeared. Had been evaporated all season and then was on the roster. I thought it was maybe a mistake by the lineup guy, and that was one of the fake names they put until it's filled <laughs> out. Right, yes. The 0-2 pitch is in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. But either way, Charlie Names, here you go. Make a name for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> that was actually an accident, I promise. Right. I don't do these things on purpose, Tom. Courtney Gettins with the 1-2. And that's fouled off. Sky high into the Bama bullpen. One ball, two strikes, it remains. Cook's best control scoreboard update. Bottom of the fifth, Auburn now leading Troy 3-1 after a three-run homer. And Florida still up 7-0 on Florida A&M. Kelly Barnhill surprisingly not in the circle for that game. <laughs> the one-two is a two-hopper to Morgan. Makes a nice stop behind the third base bag. The throw overs in time for out number two. I hate this word, Tom, but look at the swagger that Matty Morgan plays with at third. Just after making the play, bouncing around, we saw the celebration video after Alyssa Brown's catch. Just what a good teammate, what a good player, and yeah. so excited for everything that happens in a game that goes well for Alabama. It's great to see. Pre-game interview with Coach Murphy yesterday, we talked about Maddie Morgan and first pitch to Victoria Peterson's in there for a called strike. No balls and one strike, and he just talked about how it's a mindset thing and yeah. how that has really been part of her improvement here from year one to year two and just, you know, realizing and knowing that, you know, you can play at this level. Not You're exactly the, right. Not having the confidence last year that she does this year is that one's fouled off, no balls and two strikes. Well, that's the other thing we've discussed with her, right? I mean, confidence at the plate and swinging through pitches and making solid contact. She's done that this year. and. You're right, that confidence translating into the field. I mean, she's been solid in the hot corner, and that's maybe the toughest infield position there is. You could argue. I'm sure some people watching or listening might disagree there. The 0-2 is outside. One ball, two strikes with two outs here. Top of the fifth, 2-1 Alabama. Tied, leaving the bases loaded with the opportunity to kind of bust it open there in the last inning. Left six runners on today, despite only getting the two hits. The one, two. Check swing, did she go around? They're gonna ask the third base umpire. No, says Robert Johnson. Count moves, two balls and two strikes. But that's about as good a chase pitch as you can throw. That was a pitch solely trying to get Peterson to swing. That wasn't going to get a strike call. And almost got her. Almost it was did, yeah. right on the numbers. Just a great pitch from Gettins. The two, two. Comes in too high again, three balls and two strikes. Even though she's had the earned run, Courtney Gettins, I would say this is the strongest she has looked so far this season. Really hasn't wavered in her confidence. Payoff pitch. Misses low and outside for ball four, and that's the first walk that the New Zealander is allowed here today. So I say that, <laughs> and now Courtney Gettins has walked her first batter. Here we go. The, the, this is when I question some of the things going on with Courtney. She's made mistakes in the past after giving up walks, hitting batters, yada, 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 all those things. Will she correct that here against the top of the order? Because this is who Louisiana Monroe wants at the plate to start a rally against the Crimson Tide. Sydney McKay steps in. The first pitch is a called strike taking off and caught stealing is Peterson. Second time here this weekend that Reagan Dykes has thrown out a would-be base dealer and it gets Alabama out of the inning here in the fifth. The shotgun fires again behind the plate. I'm a little surprised that Molly Fickner sent the runner there with two outs, but Alabama taking advantage and ending any possible threat there in the top half of the fifth. So for ULM here in the fifth, no runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left. We move to the bottom of the fifth inning, still 2-1 Crimson Tide on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Yeah. Thank you. 
ahead to the home half of the fifth inning. Alabama with a 2-1 lead over ULM here, the final game of the 2019 Easton Bama Bash. Alabama looking to go 5-0 on the weekend and send ULM to an 0-5 weekend here in Tuscaloosa. Middle of the order due up for Alabama, Bailey Hemphill, Caroline Hardy, and Mary Schroeder facing Carly Taranto in the circle for ULM. Bailey Hemphill stepping to the plate, one for one, singled, knocking in a run and scoring herself in the first inning and walked in the third. First pitch, Hemphill takes it high, four ball one. And, and sorry, Tom, I didn't mean to cut you off, but since that first inning, Taranto has not given Hemphill anything to hit. Right. And nothing on that first pitch. I would assume Taranto's feeling good about herself, right? She's had a tough start to the year, but is pitching well. She won't give Hemphill anything. That's in the dirt, two balls and no strikes. Ray, we've talked about what's going on nationally somewhat here in the broadcast, elsewhere in the SEC, but one place you can get a lot of that is on a podcast. Ah, uh, yes, our podcast, yeah. Out of the Box is what it's called. We've had one episode. Yes, I know all of you want more, and they will come. <laughs> yes, I'm sure everyone wants all, all yes. of the Tom and Gray they can get. Oh, of course, and it's happening in two weeks. The 2-0, that's in there, first strike, two balls and one strike. It's Out of the Box. You can follow it on Twitter at Out of the Box underscore pod. First episode is on there. It's on iTunes. Just search Out of the Box. It's also on SoundCloud. There's a link on Twitter. Gray and Tom talking about Alabama, the SEC, everything nationally. The 2 1 pitch, and that one is a ground ball, and it's off of the third baseman's foot. And reaching first base is Bailey Hemphill. And that was, Shaw kind of took an, an odd. Uh, attack at that one as she was moving to her right trying to stay in front of the ball and kind of in between herself and the bag on the third base bag hit off her foot and Bailey's on base. I don't want to tell Molly Fickner how to do her job because she knows a lot about softball but maybe a geometry class for some of these ULM <laughs> defenders because they have taken some very weird angles at some of the balls hit their way today. Uh, I'll say one more thing as Chloe Anderson comes out to pinch run for Bailey Hemphill about the podcast. First show with uh, Patrick Murphy, talked a lot about the team, made a lot of gold mine, landmine predictions. A lot of them are working out for us so far. Discuss the whole SEC, talk to Emily Petek, who I'm sure is watching or listening right now. And uh, we'll be back March 7th, and I'm going to line up the guests this week. So it's going to be All right. a lot of fun. Episode 2 coming up, out of the box, underscore pod on Twitter. Caroline Hardy steps in on her senior day. The first pitch is high for a ball. They'll throw behind Chloe Anderson back out at first base. Freshman Anderson from Candler, North Carolina. Basically the designated base runner for the Crimson Tide this year. And just her second appearance this weekend, kind of surprising to be honest. 1-0 to Hardy. He's outside, two balls and no strikes to the movie buff Caroline Hardy. We talked about that her last time up. Had a summer internship with the USSAA Pride in Cocoa Beach, Florida, in the NFP. So, again, she's has the connections, going to start looking towards getting into coaching. The 2-0 drops in for a called strike, and Anderson takes off and still second without a throw on that off-speed pitch. And Alabama now with a running and runner in scoring position. With nobody out. It's good pitch recognition by Chloe Anderson, and also I think Robel had a tough time for whatever reason getting the ball out of her mitt. So easily stolen for Chloe Anderson, doing her job as a pinch runner. Her third stolen base in as many attempts this season. Now the 2 1, and Hardy takes this one in foul ground. It will get out of play into the ULM bullpen. Just a touch late on that swing. Her timing, though, since Arizona. I mean, when she came in and hit that pinch hit home run, her timing's been a lot better. That's been the thing with Carroll. When she's swung at pitches, when she's put it in play, her timing's been a bit off. But she's looked a lot more confident, a lot more comfortable. She's made some adjustments with her swing. Here comes the 2-2 two -two pitch. Fouled off. Off the facade in front of the Bama dugout. Sending Crimson Tide players scattering. Yeah, Alyssa Brown was in the little gap there where people walk out. We might need to move her. She's our <laughs> highlight queen for the week. We don't need her getting decapitated. Or yeah. anyone, really. But. Right, we certainly hope there is no decapitation. <laughs> no injuries today. Here comes the 2-2, two -two and Hardy lines this one. Speaking of decapitations, almost takes off Patrick Murphy's head. And that is the first time I've ever seen him have to react to a foul ball. Usually it's maybe a sidestep or a step right. forward. He had to go full five Ds of dodgeball right yes. there. Yes. 
I'm Molly. really glad I've gotten to work that in and <laughs> broadcast in two straight days. And Molly Fickner is going to come out to talk with the entire ULM infield. Two and two is the count. Alabama leads at 2-1 here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Molly Fickner making her return to Tuscaloosa. We also found out from Patrick Murphy that someone else has made their return to Tuscaloosa here today. Uh, yes. That we definitely wanted to give a shout out to. Yeah, absolutely. Nick Seiler, Patrick Murphy's first time, excuse me, first full time athletic trainer from Kalamazoo, Michigan, yes. is in attendance. And I saw him around the Rhodes house. I didn't get a chance to speak with him, but Patrick Murphy wanted us to be sure to shout out Nick, who is here at Rhodes watching the Alabama Crimson Tide. Molly's uh, parents unable to make the trip here this weekend, but talked about them as well. They were some of the best softball parents that Coach yeah. Murphy's ever had to deal with. And, uh, and I know parents come in all shapes and sizes <laughs> in terms of you know, how they are with coaches. So that's high praise for the Fickners to be so beloved by Patrick Murphy. The 2-2, and that one is fouled off. And it will get out of play about four rows deep behind the ULM dugout. And that, to me, says a lot about Caroline Hardy's growth as a player at the plate because that off-speed pitch, even last year, that fools her. That's a pitch that she has struggled with a lot in her career, but fighting off that off-speed curve on the outside, that's a great piece of hitting. Another 2-2 chance here for Hardy, the pitch. And that ball is driven to deep left field, way back. shot giving the Crimson Tide the 4-1 lead. She's a movie buff, Tom. <laughs> she loves the Oscars. How about a nominee for best picture? That swing, Caroline Hardy on her senior day. Are you kidding? The hug with Allison Habits at first base. The entire team coming and greeting her. I'm emotional, Tom, my <laughs> gosh. And again, with the confidence, the adjustments at the plate. She is a completely different batter this year. I don't know, not even just this year, but in the last week, I don't know what has changed so much about Caroline Hardy, but to do that today in front of basically all of Vestavia Hills. Yeah, the, the entire city of Birmingham is I here. Mean, and wow, what a oh, shot there by, by Caroline Hardy. What a moment, wow. Her third home run of the season. and So now she's tied for second on the team in home runs with, with three. <laughs> and uh, Tuscaloosa Toyota RBIs, number uh, six and seven, as Schroeder grounds this one out the second, and there's one away. And I'll say this, you know, we've talked a lot about all the batting talent in this lineup. It's becoming a little difficult to not want to put Caroline Hardy in there somewhere. Right. And that just makes things a little bit more complicated for Patrick Murphy. But in a good way, again. Uh, oh yeah, again, yeah. this is a, it's the best of problems. Right. But. I mean, after what she's done in the last five, six games, how do you not at least consider Caroline Hardy at DP or first base or something? Reagan Dyke steps in. The first pitch to her is low for ball one. But then again, what do you do? Uh, how do you shift people around? It's right because you, you want to keep. You know, against you know, say you're playing an SEC game uh, tomorrow, uh, you want Reagan Dykes and Bailey Hemphill both in the in the lineup. Absolutely, Reagan certainly for her defensive abilities. The one zero is low, two balls and no strikes, and you definitely want Kaylee Tao in the lineup. Yeah, that's the other problem. You've got basically four players for two positions. Right. Three positions if you throw in catcher. And, oh, yeah, it's going to be fun. And that's <laughs> maybe that's the other good part about having the next month against unranked opponents. And not to say they're not tough. There will be tough games in there's there. Gonna, yeah, there's, but you can experiment yeah. with things, especially out in Hawaii. Here comes the 2-0. In there for a called strike, two balls and one strike. Yeah, that's one thing you're thinking about. You know, making the trip out to Hawaii on spring break. You, get, you also got to play five games yeah. while you're there too. Six games. Yeah. So even even and you know we saw what happened to SIU Edwardsville yesterday against Arkansas. Hawaii's had a tough start as well. Two one pitch is outside. Three balls and one strike now on Reagan Dykes. 0 for two. She grounded out in the first and reached on an error in the fifth. And again, I'm not going to try and speculate what Patrick Murphy will do with the lineup. We've tried that for years, and we have been wrong many times. But again, Caroline Hardy is making her case. Yeah. The 3-1. Low for ball four. Reagan Dykes draws the walk now with one out here in the fifth. 
Alabama's doubled their run total for the day with two runs so far here in the fifth to take a 4-1 lead off a two-run homer by Caroline Hardy, which this uh, Bama offense has had a bullseye put on the uh, the batting practice yeah. uh, netting out there. That poor thing. It's just taken a couple of shots, including Hardy's home run. First pitch to Maddie Morgan. In there for a call strike. I believe that's called a turtle, turtle shell. I Don't ask me. Yeah, I, have, I, I tried to find the words for it on Friday, and that's why I <laughs> incorrectly called Caroline Hardy's home run. I didn't know what yeah. it was about to hit. Yeah. I said it's about to hit the wall. I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't come up with anything. The 2 1, excuse me, the 0 1 is in there for a called strike. No balls and two strikes. Now I'm Maddie Morgan, who's 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a walk here so far today. And how about the show of power this weekend? Seven home runs by the Crimson Tide. And coming in a variety of ways Hemphill, Hardy, Skylar Wallace with an inside the Parker. It's been impressive, the show of power. That ball is grounded to short, and that's going to high hop the shortstop. The throw over to second from Mount is in time to get Dykes. Morgan reaches on the fielder's choice, and there's two away. That is a wonderful play by Mount, and here's why. There was no way the junior was going to be able to throw that to first based on the hop, but she knew Reagan Dykes was coming at second. She never looked at first. She never thought about it. The quick throw to second was what she had to do because there was no other play, and she made that one for out number two. Great job. Great awareness by the junior shortstop. As Claire Jenkins steps in, Jenkins without an official at bat today. She walked in the second, laid down a sacrifice in the fourth. That ball is in the dirt. One ball, no strikes. I also want to give credit to the third baseman, Shaw, for just wanting to get dirty on that play because <laughs> she dove and had no chance at getting to that ball. No. Sometimes you, but, you, you know, just do it. You, <laughs> just, Nike, you, know. you Nike it on every play. <laughs> the 1-0. Low, two balls and no strikes. Two outs here in the fifth. 4-1 Alabama. The Tide now out hitting ULM for the first time since the first inning, 4-3. We've got a Cook's Pest Control scoreboard update talking about opponents not being ranked. Mississippi State, a home series in a couple weeks. They trail Southeast Louisiana 2-1, bottom of the third. The 2-0, low, three balls and no strikes. That's the Alex Wilcox Memorial Tournament mm. in Startville. Remember that story from last year as Alex lost her battle with cancer. And I do hope, I don't know if there will be a time, but I do hope there's a weekend where we wear that teal again. That one's outside on four straight pitches. Jenkins takes the walk. Now runners on first and second with two away. Very underrated factor to Claire Jenkins' name, other or, uh, game other than the bunting um, in terms of improvement this year is her eye. Last year, the strikeout to walk ratio was okay, but it wasn't great. This year, much better. Now 11 walks are just four strikeouts. She's been a lot more patient and a lot more selective of what pitches she goes after. Taylor Clark will now step in. Junior from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, still looking for her first hit as a member of the Tide. First pitch. This is outside. One ball, no strike. She grounded into a double play in the second and walked in the fourth, and timeout called as Warble will go out to talk with Toronto, who's having trouble finding the strike zone here this inning, especially after giving up the home run. So while we've got a second, Tom, let's look at the SEC standings and see how things look and you know, whatnot right now. Two undefeated teams still. One of those we're here seeing, Alabama, mm -hmm. the other Florida, 17-0, Georgia 14-1, that one loss to Indiana. At the time, it seemed like a surprise, but now, you know, Indiana seems... I think they're pretty good now. Tennessee 10 and 2, South Carolina 9 and 2, LSU with a gaudy 13 and 3 record, Auburn 12 and 3, but you know, a couple of very surprising losses and you could argue they should be 15 and 0 considering the schedule they've played. The 1-0 to Taylor Clark is low and inside, two balls and no strikes. Arkansas is 10 and 3 with two shocking losses to Drake and Southeast Missouri State of all teams and not even close. 6-1 mm -hmm. at Bogle Park. Mississippi State 9-3, Missouri 9-4, Texas A&M 9-5, and, and they should probably finally drop out of the rankings. The 2-0 pitch, and Clark will ground this one foul. Two balls and one strike. Ole Miss is 7-4, and, and they've seen – they've kind of been all over the place. They beat yeah. Minnesota. They beat Arizona State. They've lost two games this weekend to Texas. They've had some tough games. They lost to Boise State, the biggest black eye. And then Kentucky 9-7, and seven, 
and they're, I would assume they're going to be ranked probably 24, 25. But if they're moved out after the slate they've had, I don't get it. 2-1 pitch now to Clark. Again, fouled off. Two balls and two strikes. And as we've said on the podcast at Out of the Box underscore pod, uh -huh. we aren't huge believers in Kentucky this year because you know, this, they've, got, they've got players back, but not a lot of great arms in the circle. But still, you look at their losses. Washington, UCLA, Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, undefeated Illinois, and at Houston. The 2-2 is a bit high. Three balls and two strikes, and Ted Broyles behind the plate flinched as though he was going to ring up Taylor Clark, and that's what the ULM dugout is yelling about. I think it was a good call because as it came over the plate, it was a bit high, but it settled right in the glove yeah. of the catcher, Robel. It was well placed, but maybe started a bit too high. Payoff pitch on its way. Clark fouls it off. We'll do it again. Three balls and two strikes. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. 4-1 Alabama. Ty trying to finish off a 5-0 weekend. Run their winning streak to start off the season to 15. They'll head to UAB in the midweek on Wednesday night and then back home next weekend for the Crimson Classic. Should be a fun trip to Birmingham on Wednesday. Payoff pitch, Clark will one-hop this to third. The third baseman Shaw has it, steps on the bag for out number three. And Taylor Clark is still searching for that first hit as a member of the Crimson Tide. But Alabama, here in the fifth, gets two runs on two hits, including the two-run bomb by Caroline Hardy on her senior day, the second straight Alabama senior to hit a home run on her senior day. Reagan Dykes did it yesterday as well for Alabama. Two runners left on base with no errors by ULM here in the fifth. We played five, four, one Crimson Tide here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. to the top of the sixth inning. Alabama now with a 4-1 lead over ULM. Two up for the Warhawks, top of the order here in the sixth. McKay, Cresta, and Thibodeau facing Courtney Geddens in the circle. The first pitch, low and inside for ball one. Courtney Geddens so far, five innings, three hits, one run which is earned, one walk and four strikeouts. Just a 63 pitches, that was her 64th, so she's doing it pretty efficiently so far here today. The 1-0, swings and misses at that one that she was fooled by. One ball, one strike. And if you're ULM, you feel like this is when you have to attack. You've got the top of the order, McKay, who had that single back in the first. You've got the folks in the lineup that were able to drive across a run. If you want to win, if you want to pull off the upset, this is who you need to get hits. 1-1, one, one fouled back. One ball and two strikes now on Sydney McKay. McKay, a senior from Pearland, Texas. That's something we were talking about, what Molly Fickner has to recruit at ULM. You can do it mostly Louisiana, but if you can grab a few out of state of Texas, the one-two is grounded. Courtney Geddens has it and makes the backhanded shovel pass to, to Caroline Hardy. That was a very athletic play there by Geddens coming out of the circle. There's one away. Well, who says the triple option's dead? Courtney <laughs> Gettens with a play that would make Paul Johnson want to recruit her if he hadn't retired from Georgia Tech. That's a very tough play for a pitcher to make, basically moving sideways, offhand throwing. That was a very impressive little maneuver from Gettens in the circle. 
Jacqueline Cresta steps in. She's first pitch swinging. She pops it up to deep short, stepping back and making the play. A step onto the grass is Jenkins, and there's two away. First pitch swinging by Cresta, and again, if the wind wasn't so strong out there and left, that might have had enough to maybe drop in that little triangle, but Claire Jenkins easily tracking it. So that will now bring up Bailey Thibodeau. There's quickly two gone here in the sixth. Thibodeau's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a foul out. First pitch, low and away. One ball, no strikes. And it is a tough sun field right now for the right side of the field for the Crimson Tide defensively. We see both Taylor Clark and Caroline Hardy, Kaylee Tao in the outfield as well, shading their eyes from the sun setting behind us. They're to the left of us. That ball is in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. And with sunglasses on, if that says anything. So, and hats, visors, I mean, layers on layers of protection trying to see what's happening. Which again, we're not complaining about the sun at right. all, but it does make things difficult out there in the field sometimes. 2-0, misses a touch inside. The counts moves to three balls and no strikes. Is this the first 3-0 count Courtney has seen today? It, as yeah. efficient as she's yeah. been, it looks like it. Here comes a 3-0 pitch. That one's right down the middle for a called strike. Three and one. This is how Courtney Getton should pitch against a group of five teams, against the mid-majors like ULM. And that's no respect to, or no disrespect rather, to the Warhawks. We love what Molly Fickner's doing with this program. But Courtney Getton should be playing like this against them. 3-1's a nice off-speed pitch with movement. Hitting the outside edge, the count is full. Three balls and two strikes now on Thibodeau. In a game like this, a performance like this, it's what she needs confidence-wise. We know how good Montana Fouts is. We know about Sarah Cornell. Gettins can be there, too. Payoff pitch is a one-hopper in fair ground on the third base side. The stop made by Maddie Morgan. The throw over is in time for out number three. And Alabama shuts down ULM here in the top of the sixth as they go down in order. We move to the bottom of the sixth inning. Alabama still leads at 4-1 here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from their field, IMG College. to the home half of the sixth inning. Alabama with a 4-1 lead over ULM. Top of the order due up for Alabama. Tau, Size, and Hemphill. As Carly Toronto will go back out to pitch for the Warhawks. And the game that, despite giving up the four runs, three earned by Toronto, she's probably pitched uh, pretty admirably as, as well as Molly Fickner could have expected here today. Well, again, when you think about coming in, six and a third innings pitched, 21 earned runs and 20 hits. I mean, that's, uh, it's not great, even, it, even for a freshman. But she has come in against a really potent offense who has been hitting well all weekend. And she has put the clamps down. Other than the one home run to Hardy and the first inning, she's looked really impressive in the circle. And she's got great movement. I've really liked what I've seen from her. Kaylee Tao steps in. The first pitch is low and away for ball one. And you think about a pitcher like Taranto, you know, if, if she can improve and get better and not have those off days, that's a pitcher that Molly Fickner can build a team around. Mm -hmm. That's an ace. And if you have an ace as a mid-major, that's huge. We've seen teams like JMU that can get really good with aces. 1-0's outside, two balls and no strikes. Tao came in, replacing Alyssa Brown as a pinch hitter in the fourth and stayed in defensively. Reached on a fielder's choice, that lap bat. 
And that was the inning where ULM really avoided uh, what could have been an offensive onslaught by Alabama. The 2-0. High, three balls, no strikes. And still looking for Kaylee Tao to attack. You know, near the end of her freshman year, we called it, I guess, kind of the going into the sophomore slump. She was letting people pitch to her. She wasn't going after pitches. And, you know, getting on base via the walk is fine. But Kaylee Tao is in the game to get hits and get RBIs. And wasn't really happening at the end of last year. I'd like to see her do that now. Three O's right down the middle, three balls and one strike. Except on that pitch, obviously. Right. That's a take pitch all day. But, again, she's got to swing a bit more, got to go after some of these pitches. Yeah, you might strike out a couple times, but the good things will happen a lot more than the bad. Now the shadows here at the Rhodes House have moved past the, circ the pitching circle, so that added probably an extra degree of difficulty for the hitters. That ball drops in for a called strike. Upper part of the zone, up around the letters, but the count is now full, three balls and two strikes. And again, that's the pitch that Taranto has thrown that's been so impressive. Payoff pitch on its way. Tao grounds it, and it will go foul before it was touched. And Good thing for ULM because the stop was made by Thibodeau and she tried to swipe tag at Tao, which was avoided. <laughs> so had that been touched in fair ground, would have been an infield hit for Kaylee. So the count remains three balls and two strikes and we'll do it again. And I bet we'll see that off speed drop curve again here with two strikes. That pitch was a bit faster inside. Here comes the three two and that one is grounded to short. Mount has it, will make the throw over, but it's a bad throw. It one hops the first baseman and bounce over the ULM dugout. So Tao will head on to second on the error. And just a poor throw there by Mount as looked at her and she points to herself saying, my bad. It's, it's a, that would made it a very tough play for Thibodeau there at first. Yeah, it wasn't a great hit by Kaylee Tao, but again, just putting it out there, that's what you want to do. It's, it was potentially going to be a productive out and then Mount, uh, she, you know, she had to make a play. That's what Patrick Murphy wants from his offense. Just put it out there and make the defense make a play. The Warhawks couldn't, and now a runner in scoring position with nobody out here in the sixth. And we will see now a pinch hitter for Alabama as Kayla Davis will grab a bat and head out. Replacing KB Sides, who after having a great first four games of the Eastern Bama Bash, was 0 for 3 so far here today. And now the freshman from Hueytown, Alabama, Kayla Davis, will get an opportunity. Davis is 1 for 4 with a run scored so far here this year. Is 0 for 1 this weekend. Here comes the first pitch. Outside for ball one. And we've talked a lot about Kayla Davis and her potential at the plate was one of the best, if not the best, during fall ball. Hit a couple long bombs in those games and hasn't really had a chance to shine at the plate, really hasn't had a chance to get a rhythm, but she can drive in a run with a hit here. 1-0, low and away, two balls and no strikes. And again, that's a testament to how much hitting talent there is. Probably any other year, maybe not any other year, but last year, if we're in this situation, Kayla Davis might be seeing more playing time, but just too many hot bats in the Alabama lineup right now for, uh, for Davis. 2-0, fouled straight back, just missed that one, and she pounds her foot with the bat in frustration after having the timing just right on that one, but was underneath it. And a reason why people are so excited about Kayla Davis, when she swings, it is a swing. Yeah. I mean, that She does not get cheated up. No, that's for sure. that was a lot of velocity right there. She goes after it every single time. I mean, there it's not half-hearted at yeah. all. So Kaylee Tao on second. Here comes a 2-1. Hammered foul. Count moves to two balls and two strikes. Also getting maybe the most hitting help from the wind today as it's moving in the direction of the outfield left to right for the first time today. Right out toward the brickyard out there, which there are a lot of fans out there basking in the sun. The 2-2 pitch, and that one is grounded to first, a stop made by Thibodeau, 
as Davis was jammed, but the runner does move to third with one away, so you get the productive out there at least if you're Kayla Davis and getting congratulations from her teammates heading back to the dugout. Yeah, you're right, productive out, and that's the kind of swing that freshmen will learn going forward. That was a protective swing. She was, she was jammed, like you said, but just kind of swung because I think she felt like she had no other option with the ball coming in on her hands, and that's something that she'll learn as she continues to get more experience, that sometimes you just lean back and take it. Maybe you get hit, you take, go aboard, that's okay. But again, a productive out anyway, and RBI chance for Hemphill. First pitch to Bailey's low for ball one. Hemphill's two for two. An RBI single and scored in the first, walked in the third, and singled in the fifth, and her pinch runner, Chloe Anderson, came in to score on the Caroline Hardy two-run homer. The 1-0, and that's a one-hopper to third. Shaw has it, looks to run her back, and will throw to first to get the out. There's two away. Don't think I've ever seen an on-field staring contest quite <laughs> like I just witnessed between Shaw and Tao. Shaw, that was a good three seconds of just daring Kaylee Tao to go home. And uh, Tao did not. But another RBI chance for Caroline Hardy after Hemphill goes down. So Hardy will step up. One for three on the day. Grounded out in the first, reached on air in the third, and hit a two-run homer in the fifth. Here on her senior day, we had a Hardy party last time up. First pitch. Hardy first pitch swinging and takes it past the second baseman into center field. See if that could be an error, but either way, a runner comes in to score, and Alabama now leads it 5-1. to one. I might have to call that one an error. Again, I'm not sure the angles that ULM is taking as Cresta was moving in to go and get that ball over at second. I, I, she had the play. She had the positioning, and it just... Got through. I think she got caught be in between thinking she could get completely in front of it and field it as normal or just, you know, reaching out and backhanding right. it. And so she kind of got caught up in between and the ball went right past her and still waiting to get a official score there on that one. But again, Caroline Hardy, another run driven in, yeah. we assume. And a, an impressive day on her senior day. You know, sometimes you either have an excellent day or you have a really rough day because, you know, you got a lot of people here. There's pressure. You might be pressing a bit. Not so for Caroline Hardy. No. She's been excellent. And now Skylar Wallace will get in that bat, replacing Maris Schroeder. And they did call it an error, Tom. Okay, yep. First pitch. Wallace takes it outside for ball one. Two outs here in the sixth. Alabama's added a run on an error. It's 5-1 Crimson Tide. And unfortunately, because of that, not an RBI for Caroline Hardy. Right. But still the two RBIs from the home run, so that'll work. The 1-0 to Skylar Wallace, the freshman from Woodstock, Georgia, comes in too high, two balls and no strikes. Skyler batting 333, 10 of 30 with seven runs scored, two doubles, a home run, and eight runs driven in. That home run uh, inside the Parker yesterday. The 2 0. In there for a called strike around the letters. Skyler, three for nine with three runs scored with that. Solo inside the park shot for the weekend. And it was huge because that was right out of a delay. 2-1 is outside, three balls and one strike. We'd been sitting around for about an hour and a half waiting to come back. And at the time, the game was still relatively close. Missouri State yeah. had just put up three runs. It was 6-4 Alabama. Momentum was kind of up in the air as per usual after delays. Skylar Wallace grabbed it right back. The 3-1 and Wallace grounds this one foul at the plate. Count is now full, three balls and two strikes. Two outs, Caroline Hardy standing on first. Payoff pitch, Wallace takes this one to shallow left and making it, oh, unable to make a diving catch in foul ground was McKay. So now Hardy will have to head back to first. 
She was going with the pitch. Picks up the bat to hand it back to Skylar Wallace and we'll do it again. Three balls and two strikes. Wallace tried to go opposite field there. Yeah, reaching a bit there and you know, the, there's room. We've seen the wind affect things out in the outfield, but just a touch foul there. Good effort out and left by McKay. Another 3-2 is on its way. Hardy goes and it is outside for ball four. So now runners on first and second with two away. Didn't realize the number was so high, Tom. That's the eighth walk for Taranto today. Yeah. Say between the walks and the five errors, you can see where some of the issues are yeah. on this ULM team. And again, that, you know, the coaching will help with that. That's a little bit of undisciplined nature. We know Molly Fickner's gonna come in, change the culture, adjust all that. This yeah. is going to be a good team eventually. They've got a lot of really good pieces, and I like what I see on the roster and on the field, but a couple things that need to be tidied up. Reagan Dyke steps in. The first pitch to her is outside. Four ball one. Reagan's 0 for 2. She walked, or excuse me, grounded out in the first, reached on error in the fourth, and walked in the fifth. And some of the, the errors have been forced. Yeah, Alabama. that's right. You know, that's and that what happens. Yeah, put it in play, make the defense make plays on you. The 1 0. Outside again, two balls and no strikes. But again, this is going to be a program. I'll be willing to bet that in the next probably three or four years, Louisiana Monroe will be a top two program in the Sun Belt. And they'll be a contender in a regional somewhere. 2 0 in there for a strike, 2 and 1. Now on Reagan Dykes. Yeah, if they can get the rivalry between Monroe and Louisiana. University of Louisiana, Louisiana Lafayette, mm -hmm. ULL, the Raging Cajuns, whatever they want to be called today. <laughs> uh, if you can get that rivalry rolling there in the Sun Belt with those two, it's going to be a lot of fun. The 2 1 pitch. That one is lifted to deep center field, ranging back to her left, and making the catch is Peterson for out number three. Off the bat, that one looked really, really good but it kind of died up in the air, might have got caught up in some wind. But Alabama not able to get another run across to get a hit even in the sixth inning. But Alabama does get one run on no hits. There were two ULM errors and two runners left on base. We move to the top of the seventh inning. Last chance for ULM. It's 5-1 Crimson Tide here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. to the top of the seventh inning. Last chance for ULM. This is Alabama softball here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Josh Smith back at our studios. Tom Canterbury alongside Gray Robertson. And it is 4-5-6 for ULM. Mount Warble and Hogan facing Courtney Geddens in the circle looking to finish this one off with a complete game. Molly Fickner's talking to the home plate umpire. Might have a pinch hitter. Not here, but maybe coming up. We do have one on deck for the Warhawks. But Jane Mount will get the first opportunity, and she scored the lone Warhawk run coming off the RBI single by Anna Hogan back in the fourth inning. Yeah, and Courtney Gettens, other than that one moment in the fourth inning, has been rock steady today, exactly what she needed in the circle this afternoon. First pitch to Jaden Mount, foul back off of Reagan Dyke's mask for 
strike one. Pre-game show coming up in just a little while for Alabama and Georgia women's basketball elsewhere on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. 4.50 the airtime, 5 o'clock is tip. The 0-1 is swung on and miss. No balls and two strikes. The 0-2 pitch. Drops right in there for a called strike three. And Courtney Geddens comes right in here in the seventh inning and gets the first strike out on three straight pitches. I would say the changeup is working. That was absolutely beautiful. Just the movement, the speed, the pace completely fooled the batter. Uh, what a great pitch there by Courtney Gettins. And again, she just looks so good in the circle today. Exactly what she needed for her confidence. Adriana Chavaria is the pinch hitter for ULM and she swings at the first offering. Comes up empty, no balls and one strike. Chavaria. Getting her first at bat of the season right here. She's appeared in two games. That pitch is in there for a called strike. No balls and two strikes. Yeah, usually a pitcher is Shaveria, but getting a chance at the plate against Gettins. Freshman from Pearland, Texas. The 0-2. Fouled back, gets a piece, stays alive. No balls and two strikes. The 0-2, fouled back again, no balls and two strikes. What's the fastest way for Tide fans in Northwest Alabama to get to worldwide destinations? The Golden Triangle Regional Airport, of course. Just one hour from Tuscaloosa with no construction traffic. GTR Airport in Columbus, Mississippi provides easy parking and short security and check-in lines. Golden Triangle Regional Airport is simply more convenient. Visit them at gtra.com. That one's fouled back, we'll do it again, no balls and two strikes. Two. That one's outside. One ball and two strikes as Chavaria continues to battle here with one out in the seventh. And also good to see the ULM dugout continuing to holler, be loud. Again, Molly Fickner, she's got a good culture already in her first year. That ball just misses outside. The count moves to two balls and two strikes. Next up for ULM, they will travel to Lake Charles to take on McNeese State. And then they go to the Central Arkansas Tournament. 2-2, two -two, foul back. Do it again, two balls and two strikes where, hey, guess who they get to play to start <laughs> off with? Missouri State. Of course. So <laughs> Missouri State and Louisiana Monroe, Florida and Illinois State, right. all these new rivalries. Mm -hmm. I love it. SEMO, Arkansas, Pine Bluff, and Coppin State in that tournament. So. Couple possible victories there for ULM. Yeah, also good competition. SEMO yeah. beating Arkansas. The 2 2. Comes in a bit high and the count's full. Three balls and two strikes. And then they start off Sunbelt play taking on Troy. ULM. And that is a very good Troy team. Good talent in the circle. Payoff pitch, and that one is blooped in foul ground on the first base side, but no one can get to it. We'll do it again, three balls and two strikes. It's a pretty impressive first at-bat of a season for Shaveria. Yeah. Just continuing to fight off pitches. Courtney Gettins went after her, she stayed alive, tried to get her to chase, held off. And she's a freshman. This is a very seasoned first at-bat of a career. <laughs> Another 3-2 on its way, and that one is popped up on the infield. Hardy on the run will make the catch on the first base side, and ULM's now down to their final out. It was a pitch that she had to swing at. It was on the inside corner, just jammed her up a bit, and Hardy making one of the final three outs of this game on her senior day, and what a senior day it has been for her. That brings up Anna Hogan, the designated player. She has lone RBI for ULM. 
First pitch. And that's a one hopper to third, but just foul. Count moves to no balls and one strike on Hogan. Junior from Colwich, Kansas. The 0 1. And that's a dribbler back to the pitcher. Geddens has it, makes the throw, and that will do it. Warhawks go down in order here in the seventh. No runs, no hits, no errors. No runners left. Your final score, Alabama 5, ULM 1 for the Crimson Tide. Five runs on four hits, one error, 10 runners left on for ULM. One run on three hits, five errors, and two runners left on base. With the win, Alabama improves to 15-0 to start off the 2019 season. ULM falls to 1-14. They're now in the midst of a 12-game losing streak that they'll try to uh, get snapped here next weekend as our next.